Hi there, my name is Chris and welcome back to my sewing channel called Sew Notes. First thing I want to say thank you to all my new subscribers and all my um, regular returning subscribers and everyone that's watching my videos. I really appreciate it. And I just wanted to share my appreciation with all of you watching and commenting and liking and and just enjoying my channel. I figured it was time for me to share with you a little bit about my sewing journey and where I started and where I'm at and how I got here where I am. So I have some things in front of me here. So if I look down, I might be looking at notes or grabbing something. I have a little beverage with me. So if you want to grab a beverage, I'm not sure how long this video will be. I hope not too long, but I want to give you an in-depth look into my sewing journey and what brought me here and, and what keeps me motivated. So let's get started. <laughs> All right, okay. So. I will pop up pictures here too when I'm referring to something. I lost some of my pictures because I forgot to back up my camera. So I'm gonna try my best to have a picture of what I'm talking about. All right, so my sewing journey, let's get started. I took sewing in high school, uh, I think grade eight, grade nine maybe. I can't remember what grades, but it didn't really pique my interest then. We sewed, I sewed, a pillowcase and embroidered my name on it and then a pair of pajama pants in which I did wrong I actually had to take them home and get my grandma to help me and then help me fix them because I sewed the legs closed I think I don't know but whatever happened my grandma helped me fix it and to be honest I never thought about sewing again my grandma would sew us stuff and Halloween costumes and and other things but never really piqued my interest. I always liked watching her, um, but nothing really piqued my interest to get started. And then my best friend who lives in Arizona, she got a sewing machine and she started sewing quilts and she kind of piqued my interest. And I was like, oh, well, maybe I should try it. So I bought my first sewing machine in um, December of 2012. And that's when I started quilting and I had no idea what I was doing. I was just buying cheap fabric from the back wall of the fabric store, hoping it looked together. I think the first quilt I worked on was like a rail fence where you had stripes this way, this way, this way. I can't find a picture of that and I probably just recently threw it out because I didn't finish it. The batting I used was terrible. It was, the batting was coming up through the needle hole and poking out and getting stuck in my machine. At this point in time, I know nothing about sewing, about needles, about thread, about uh, batting. No, I know nothing. And then I was scrolling in the Instagram one day and some girl in the UK, she was selling a, a layer cake and I really liked the fabric. So I'll insert a picture here. Uh, this was a quilt I made. I haven't finished it because I recently took it apart. I had sandwiched it together. I was using the wrong pins to sandwich it together. And uh, once again, that batting was coming up through the hole and getting stuck in my machine. So recently, last year, I believe I, I, I sewed three lines of quilting and then last year I just ripped them out and I will hopefully get to that quilt again. But I haven't touched it since but I hope to finish it because it's one of the it's one of the first projects I made and that would have been in April of 2013 is when I bought that layer quilt lay, layer cake off that gal so um, yeah so that's the start it ended there so December 2012 is when I bought my first machine and I tried to sew that quilt in April of 2013 and it didn't work out and so I just put my sewing machine off to the side and never to return to it again. Then come October of 2016, I have a job, I'm working with kids and I have this brilliant idea of a cute Halloween costume for the kids, like to go to work and wear this cute Halloween costume. 
So I'll insert pictures here again. I ended up just sewing a red tutu. Well, first I bought the wrong color, which was like purple. And I sewed this purple sparkly tutu and I wanted to be Minnie Mouse for Halloween. And my friend saw it and she needed a quick costume. So I ended up making her a little tutu with matching ears. And then I made my niece uh, same thing. And so that was October of 2016. And I would say this was the part this was the start of this whole journey that I'm on that is continuing to this day. Uh, so shortly after Halloween there, I found out I was pregnant and I knew that I wanted to sew Halloween costumes for my future children. So come January of 2017, it's when I first went to the fabric, my local fabric store and I went to pick up this pattern, McCall's 7039. And as you could tell by looking at the envelope, it's fairly still brand new. In fact, it hasn't been touched. This is the conversation I had. I picked this pattern out and I told the woman I'm pregnant and I want to learn how to sew for children and this is what I want to start off with and she recommended to me that sewing baby clothes would be tough and that I should try to sew for myself first. So I thought about it and I said ah, okay so I still picked up this pattern but I ended up picking up a giraffe quilting panel and some minky fabric on that same shopping trip and I sewed my future baby this giraffe uh, blanket so I'll insert a picture here and this is before I knew to sew right sides together so I knew nothing about sewing right sides together so what ended up happening was I laid the minky fabric wrong side or wrong side up so the minky fabric's on my floor, wrong side up. And then I put the giraffe fabric on top, so giraffe fabric right side up. Okay, so I have the wrong sides together. And what I ended up doing was folding in the minky onto the giraffe um, panel. And then I end up top stitching it. So I had no idea that maybe I should have sewed them raw, right sides together and then flipped it out and maybe top stitch. Nope, I used lots of pins and and stitched it and the pins I was using was uh, corsage pins you know when you put a corsage on you have those fancy pearl uh, pins yeah that's what I was using and so I'm gonna stop right there some of you have asked questions and some of these answers all right so this might take longer than i anticipated because my camera only allows me to record 10 minutes at a time and then it shuts off and then it has to cool down and then i have to start all over again so as i was saying some of you have asked me questions and some of your answers will be answered kind of indirectly through my story and then i'll come to the end and i'll answer all of those questions directly but you might find your answer being answered right now um so that pins one is one of the sewing mistakes I've made in the past. But So then after that giraffe blanket, I took that, that employee's advice and I started sewing for adults for me. And this was the second pattern that I bought. It's Butterick 3383. And... Here in Canada, these patterns are expensive. So if you could see, it says $2 right there. That was, to me, I was like $2 to start learning how to sew. Absolutely. So I picked out this pattern. Knew nothing about reading a pattern envelope. Nothing about it. And I ended up buying this fabric. So this is that top right here. This is my very first garment I made besides those PJ pants that didn't work out in high school. This is my next garment that I made. So very first one in my adulthood of sewing. And this was this pattern. It was actually view, uh, I would say it was view D with view, 
view E sleeves. So view D the white one with the view uh, E sleeves. So mix of the white and the blue there. So let's let's just take a look at this pattern envelope. It's a loose fitting pullover top, has stitched hems and length variations. It has side slits and three quarter length sleeves and a pocket. Fabrics that they recommend. Are you ready for this? So this was some sort of knit. It has a little bit of stretch. Not much, but a little bit of stretch. And so the fabric recommendations are lightweight linen, crepe, stable knits, and chambray. Unsuitable for obvious diagonals, allow for extra to match plaids and stripes. And so I used a knit. I don't, is this a stable knit? I don't, I don't even know. All I know is after reading that, I could have used linen. Linen's one of my favorite fabrics, but... And so I did this horribly wrong. I I used I'm almost embarrassed to talk about this, but you know what? This is my journey. It's personal to me. Um, I feel like if I didn't learn this stuff, I wouldn't be where I am today. But so I used bias binding for the neck. But the one bonus about this is check this out like is that not awesome stripe matching I think it's incredible this is my very first this one oh you could see right there it's a little bit off but but this side like you almost can't see where the seam is And you could see here, I, I cut out my notches. Very good. And what else can you notice about this? Can you notice what kind of stitch I used? Yep, that's a straight stitch. <laughs> and, oh yes, yeah, let me check. This, is the, this was the time where I used to pattern trace. I might still pattern trace to this day, but I was very, I didn't know what I was doing. And then I noticed that you got multiple sizes. So I got extra small, small and medium. So I could sew for my family and friends if I really wanted to. So that's, so now I consider this, the, the draft blanket, this is the very start of this whole journey here. Um, just looking at my notes so I stay on track here, but yes, I, so then I was sewing baby bibs and baby burp cloths for the rest of the year, and I was also experimenting. So this was my year of experimenting, not knowing what I was doing, okay? So then I made my mom and I a couple tops. I used, um, like a solid knit up here and a floral knit at the bottom. It was like a slinky polyester spandex type of thing and a Liverpool on top. I'll have a couple pi pictures there. But I didn't know anything about fabric. I didn't know what kind of fabric I, I liked. I knew that I was really liking that Liverpool fabric at the time. And then one summer I wore a Liverpool and it was so sweaty. I was like, Liverpool's not a good summer fabric, even though there's a lot of Liverpool floral prints that are summery. I still have a Liverpool daisy print in my stash that I haven't come to terms with to sew because it's just so hot in the summer and it's like a summertime print and I don't ah! anyways so now this is where this is this right here is a pivotal moment in my sewing journey it was November 2017 maybe it was October 2017 but I completed mine in November of 2017 my friend Wynne Michelle she sewed this pattern right here. This is Berta 6829. She did this view with the sleeves, but in this exact velvet, navy blue velvet, but with the sleeves. And oh my 
gosh, did she look fabulous in it. I lo like, I could tell you that I was calling every fabric store in the city near me asking if they had this pattern and if they would put it on hold for me because this pattern was hard to get. So this is actually my second time having this pattern because my first one I cut into and this pattern has a lot of meaning to me in my sewing journey. And so if I ever make this again, which I hope I do, I'm going to be trace or tracing this one out because this pattern, even my mom knows how much this pattern means to me. So I'll insert a picture of my version. I used like a purpley pink crushed velvet. And like I said, this pattern is a pivotal moment in my sewing career. I sewed this dress up specifically for my husband's Christmas party and they're always held at the end of November and like November 29th, 30th is when his Christmas parties are. And I wore, so I wore this to his Christmas party. So we had to go to my parents first, drop off my daughter so that my parents could watch her while we went to this Christmas party. And my dad had said to me, wow, it looks like you bought this dress. And that was like a huge compliment for a man, for a man to take interest and notice my sewing was huge. Like my mom loves my sewing, but for my dad to just say that to me, it was not at the time wasn't as meaningful as it will be currently, but it was quite meaningful to me. And uh, so later talking to Michelle, I found out I sewed that dress wrong and I used a straight stitch and she said to me she's like I don't even know how you got it over your head and I don't know I don't know what size I did I probably did a size 14 maybe I did it wrong I could have probably sized down but um this dress is a so come December 20. So this whole year, January till November 2017, I have enjoyed sewing. I was testing out new things, experimenting on my own. I was kind of reading a little bit here and there on the internet. I wasn't really watching YouTube. I was just seeing something and I was like, oh, I want to try and make that. So I, uh, so then come December 2017, I lose my dad. December 27, 2017. My dad has left the world. And um, that was a hard moment for me. I, I, sewing, it made these moments and that week and that month it's all a blur, but yet I still remember it like it was yesterday. But I just remember how valuable my dad telling me that that dress looked like it was store-bought. And I, then I realized how much sewing was helping me mentally, physically, with my mental and emotional health. And I remember... A couple weeks after his passing, I went to the fabric store and I picked up more velvet to make this again because my dad was just so proud of the dress I made and I figured what better to make another dress just to sew in his memory. Not really wear it anywhere in his memory, but just to sew for the healing of it. And so I ended up buying this, this color stretch velvet. Uh, it wasn't crushed though, so it was pretty smooth. And I remember I was ironing the stabilizer on the facing piece and it ruined the nap of the, of the velvet. So that's another mistake I made. The ironing the crushed velvet wasn't as noticeable because it was crushed velvet, you couldn't tell, but this ironing on the flat velvet ruined the pile. I think that's what they called. But, so I never did finish this because actually where the facing is at the seam, it's pretty thick and bulky. So it like sits pretty high up on my neck and I'm not a fan of that. Um, but before starting to sew that navy blue one, I remember talking to my uncle who is my dad's brother. And I told him like, 
I used to love to sew and now I just can't bring myself to it. And I remember him letting me know that like, no, you're going to sew again. You're, you just have to get out of this fog and you will come out and you will sew again. And ever since then, ever since making that navy blue dress, I don't even have a picture of it because I didn't finish it. But ever since getting back at the sewing machine and sewing that navy blue dress, my whole sewing journey is central to the loss of my dad. Um, sewing is very, it's like deep rooted in me now because it, it's hard to explain. It's just, it's, it was my escape from my reality. So my reality was very heavy. I had a six month old daughter I had just lost my dad. So going to my sewing room and my sewing machine was just an escape from all this darkness that I was surrounded by. And so that's why my sewing journey is so important to me to this day. And, and that's why I need to sew. Like if I don't sew, I get miserable. And my husband, my family will know that I haven't sewn in a couple of days because I'm getting miserable. And uh, part of the sewing process is this. So doing a YouTube video, editing on my computer, cutting out a pattern, printing out a pattern, all this that's here, this is part of the sewing process. And so that brings me to my name here on, on YouTube and my blog name is Sew Notes. And Sew Notes was originally well it's the meaning is still there but I haven't blogged in about a year because I kind of enjoy YouTube better than my blog but so notes is me writing letters letters or blog posts about my makes to my dad in heaven so I'm kind of writing him a sewing note letting him know what I have sewed and just hoping that heaven has wi-fi sounds kind of cheesy but that's the place I was in when I made this blog and and Instagram account and then you know a few years later down the road I started YouTube but that's the meaning behind sew notes is writing notes to my dad in heaven about my sewing makes because I was hoping he would be able to see them still and be proud of how far I've come from that first velvet dress um, so that's kind of the start of my journey and why I continue to sew is because it's healing. I wouldn't say it's healing in the sense that I'm over, over losing my dad and it's, it's healing, it's healing, it's healing in the sense that it's, it, it just helps me through. I'll say that I won't get too deep into that, but now let's just talk about my sewing machines. I'll briefly talk, I'll briefly tell you when I got my machines, but that will be for another video where I could take you to, for a tour of all my machines. But so my first machine was a brother and I got it in December of 2012. Then my next one was a brother cover, uh, no, sorry, a brother serger that I got in September of 2017. And then my, Oh, then I bought my Singer embroidery machine in April of 2018. And then my mom had a coworker, a coworker whose mother passed away and they were getting, they were selling everything in her house and she had a sewing room and she had this corner sewing unit that I wanted. I just, I only wanted the sewing unit or the sew, sewing desk corner unit. And they said, you could take this all for this amount of money. And so in this haul, I remember I only wanted this corner unit and I end up getting another brother sewing machine and another singer um, serger. So now I'm up to five machines, my, my brother's sewing machine, my serger, my embroidery machine. And now I have these two machines that came with the desk and I only wanted the desk. So that was an added bonus. Plus I got fabric. Plus the desk drawers were full of notions and Taylor's chalk and anything you can name it. And then come 
April of 2021. Prior to that, I was interested in bag making, but I wanted a nice industrial machine for those nice stitches. And so that's when I got my Juki DDL 8700H. And then my most recent machine to add to my fleet of machines is my brother cover stitch machine from I purchased it at the end of December 2021, but I opened the box and and received it in the mail of January 2022. So I'll count it as my January 2022 machine. But that was that's for my sewing machine uh, fleet. So now it brings me to your questions. So I'm going to answer your questions right away. I'm going to pause my video right now for my battery and then I will answer those questions. <sighs> Alright, question time. So I went on to my YouTube community tab and I asked if you had any questions for this video because I was planning on making it. And so the first question comes from Polly from the sewing edit and she says, was there a specific project that really pushed you and you learned that that made you feel confident or was it a more gradual process? So I have to say, going back to that question, um, my Berta velvet dress was the pivotal moment where I felt confident. My dad said it looked like I bought it. And so I would say that's the make that really switched my whole sewing um, journey and gave me the confidence. There are, however, other makes that I have made that once I made them, I gain more confidence. So I think since then, so that was November 2017, I think since then every make that I make gives me a little boost of confidence. And But that's the main one. Um, but I do believe my, my, my confidence is still a gradual uh, process. Um, yeah. Polly, I hope that that answered your question and thank you so much for your question. The next question comes from Dixie. She asked me a couple of them. Uh, what were the first items that you sewed, your favorite fabric, and your all-time favorite self-made item? So let's go back. Uh, the first items that I sewed. So the first few items that I sewed, I'll insert pictures again. That was the uh, Minnie Mouse Tutu and then the giraffe baby blanket and then um, the Butterick the Butterick striped t-shirt. So those are the first items that I really sewed. Um, my favorite fabrics, I have a couple favorite fabrics to work with. So I really enjoy linen for the summer. I enjoy velvet usually around Christmas time, winter, Christmas time and cotton spandex. So those are my three uh, favorite fabrics. I have learned over the course of the time that when I first started sewing I was taking all the polyester fabrics I could find and finding dirt cheap fabrics and over the course of my sewing journey I have learned more about fabrics and what fabrics I like and don't like and polyester is one that I try to avoid. Uh, if I still buy polyester here and there but I try my best to avoid it I might buy like a collie or a, a cotton polyester blend or a linen or a rayon poly. It's, I, I just try my best to get some sort of natural fiber within the context contents that I'm buying. Um, and then my all time favorite self made. Uh, I have two and those are my most more recent or makes. And that would be the Sapporo slash Nova coat that I made in January of 2021 and then also my Laney Jane bag and I think that these are my favorite makes because to me looking at them I see how far I've come and actually speaking of that the Laney Jane bag this is the first bag that I attempted to make I believe that this is a free circle bag pattern and this is back in 2017, August of 2017. No idea what I'm doing. Oh, oops. There's some raw edges right there. Yep, that's raw edges. This is some sort of linen polyester blend. Uh, absolutely no stabilizer in here. 
and how I did the lining. So I'm probably going to, I kept this for sentimental reasons to show you how far I've come in my sewing journey. But the inside, some more raw edges. But the inside is actually constructed or how I did the inside was I actually bought that stuff that you, it's like gluing fabrics together. So you glue it on one side and then the other side you glue. So it's basically two, the fabrics are glued together. Oh yeah. So this is, I used it maybe once when I went out with a friend, but I might, now that you've seen it and seen how far I've come, I might take it apart and grab my hardware back. But I like to keep things like that because it really does show how far I've come. If you look at that bag versus my Laney Jane, uh, I've come a long way in my sewing journey. Um, and my Sapporo coat, I, I like, I like that I was brave enough to do that stripe matching. That inspiration came from So North on Instagram. She did a Sapporo coat or sorry, Nova coat. And she did some stripe play like that too. I think my stripe player is just a bit opposite of hers, but that's where my inspiration came from. And I get a lot of feedback on that when a lot of people love what I did, but it's not my own original idea. But, and then even when I open it up and that gold lining, I just, oh, and I just feel when I wear it, I feel so luxurious. So those are my two favorite makes that I've made so far. Next question comes from Ricky. And how were you able to stripe match perfectly on one of your first projects? And Ricky, <laughs> I'm going to blame it on beginner's luck. That's one of the reasons why I keep this too, is just, I'm so proud of how, of how perfectly matched that stripe is. I, uh, Ricky, I don't really know. Maybe, what I can say is, maybe it's because I didn't know what I was doing and I, I didn't want to have a fail, if that makes sense. I worn that top a couple times, but that was it until I realized I did it all wrong. But I think I just really took my time and I didn't want to have a fail because if I had a fail on my first one, my first go was at this, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. And so I think that's what happened. And then it, I became so addicted to sewing after that, that I, I had to make a project that I can make in an afternoon. Like I, if I started something, I had to be done or else I, I wasn't happy. And that's taken a lot of time for me to overcome. So now, as you could tell with my sewing speed, I'm not finishing things. I'm not starting and finishing things in one day. I'm starting and finishing things in maybe a month, maybe two months. That, that whole mental aspect of that, of not being able to finish a project right away, that's taken a lot of time to adjust to, but I'm, I think I'm adjusted to it. And I think I'm doing good with it. Uh, so thanks for your question. Stitch Hem So asked, what is my favorite part of the sewing process? So my favorite part, I'm going to say that my favorite part of the sewing process is actually the construction of the garment. Now, I'm not saying hemming. I'm talking about the sleeve seams, the side seams. I think the shell of the garment, maybe. I'm not talking about neck bands. I'm not talking about sleeve bands. I'm not talking about hem bands. I'm not talking about hemming. Uh, just the, I guess the main stitches to get it looking like a piece of clothing. I think that's my favorite part of the sewing process because it's fairly easier like doing neck bands. These it's a bit tricky because you're stretching the fabric out. And if you make a mistake, you got to start all over again. Uh, so I would say that's my favorite part of the sewing process, but to go along with that, I really enjoy filming videos and sh I know Sherry hates this part but I actually enjoy 
being on my computer and editing my videos. And I consider that part of the, my sewing process too because this has all come intertwined and it's part of my sewing journey. So Stitch Hem Sew, I hope that answers your question. But I would just say it's the main parts of sewing that makes it look like fabric to a shirt or fabric to a dress or fabric to shorts. So that's, that's my favorite part of the sewing process, I'm going to say. So thanks for your question. Marie F. What makes you come back to sewing when you get overwhelmed or frustrated with a project? I'm going to say just um, what sewing does to me internally. Like it's my escape from, it's just my escape. So I think that's what brings me back is if I have a sewing fail or I get frustrated. Yeah, I do take a couple days off from sewing. But what, what brings me back again is how it makes me feel. So I know even just sitting at my machine and prepping my machine and getting it ready and not even sewing, that just helps me stay grounded and, and, and just helps with the cope of losing my dad. I know it's been a few years of losing my dad, but it still affects me and I still think about him every day. And, and so it's just my escape and I, and I know I know when I need to sew is when I get grouchy and I get grumpy because I haven't sewn in a couple of days. So my mind, my body just lets me know, okay, Chris, you need to go sew. So I think that's what makes me keep coming back. And I might start a new project. I have a couple of projects on the go all the time. So I still have that king size quilt that I'm working on. So that's a constant one that if I have a sewing fail, okay, let's just do that for a bit. Okay, let's start a new project. So that sort of thing. So you can imagine I still have a lot of UFOs, but that's okay. But I hope that that answers your question. Uh, Teresa, she says, she's from Lost My Thread. You've come a long way. Do you remember any early mistakes that you made? And I made mistakes all along the way. I still make mistakes to this day. As you could tell, I, made, I chose the wrong fabric for my letter low top, but that's okay. Um, as, as embarrassed I am, as embarrassed as I am to tell you about my silly mistakes, it's a part of my journey. And I have to say, I'm thankful for those mistakes because I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be here if I didn't make those mistakes. And I just, I have this ready wear to wear top that I love and it's woven. It's kind of like a sheerest woven on the front and then it's a knit in the back and I remember in 2017 I went to the fabric store because I wanted to recreate something similar to this and back in 2017 I wasn't really using patterns I was kind of just tracing my ready to wear clothes on paper and using that as a pattern and I remember going to the fabric store and I said hey I want to use this these two types of fabrics which sewing needle would you recommend and the girls working there, they were, I'm not saying that they weren't not knowledgeable, but they were like, this is a woven and this is a knit. And I said, yes, like what fabric and, or what needle would you recommend? And they couldn't tell me, they told me I couldn't do it because for the woven, you'd use a universal sharp needle and for the knit, you'd use a um, ballpoint needle. So they told me I really couldn't do this. And it kind of, threw me off a bit because I was like well if if factories can make tops with woven and knit back why can't a home sewer make that so despite them not really giving me an answer and giving me guidance I just went on my own and did my thing probably did it wrong don't wear those tops but I'll insert some pictures here but I made mistakes along the way like my first mistake was using Crossage pins. Uh, I used crossage pins for that first quilt that I ever did. Uh, for knits, I was using a straight straight stitch. knew nothing about zigzag stitch. And this woven knit top I'm talking about, that's the first time I ever knew that there was different types of sewing machine needles. I never changed my sewing machine needle. Didn't know that you needed a special needle for sewing knits. So those are some of my earlier mistakes and 
one recent thing that I've come to learn is I tried to use the rotary cutter when I first started quilting and I had no idea how to work that thing and so I gave it up and all this time on Instagram everyone you know those polls that come out are you team scissors or rotary cutter I was like team scissors all the way leave that rotary cutter behind well I'm going to tell you to be honest it wasn't within it was within this last year that I've become team rotary cutter and you get a more accurate cut with a rotary cutter so right now like that's another area that I've improved on is just using that rotary cutter so Teresa I hope that this answers your question and some of the mistakes I've made early on um, let me know if it's answered your question but thanks for your question I appreciate it so April April asks do you still make mistakes I feel like I do all the time and April I'm going to tell you I make a mistake all the time and that's what makes our home sewing unique is is it's not perfect but you know what going to the store and buying stuff from the store their stuff isn't perfect either um I just feel that if I point out my mistakes I'm gonna feel less confident and I know like I don't know I struggle with this one because I I I don't want to go around telling all my friends, oh, here's a mistake, here's a mistake, because I feel like that reduces my confidence in myself. Like this shirt, if I go out with my friends and my friends say, I love your shirt, I should just say, thanks, I made it. But I don't feel that I should be like, oh, well, here's a mistake, here's a mistake, because then I feel like that reduces my confidence, if that makes sense. So I feel like if I just leave it at that, like, hey, I made it, you try to find out where the mistakes are. Don't ask me. I feel like that just makes me more confident as if I don't talk about my mistakes um, or highlight them because I'm always going to have a mistake and there, every project involves a seam ripper somewhere. So April, yes, I still do make mistakes all the time and, and that's how we learn and grow from them. So I'm proud of my mistakes. <laughs> Thanks, April, for your question. I really appreciate it. And the last question comes from Brenda. Is there a step in this in the process that you dislike? And then she says, I don't like attaching interfacing. And Brenda, I'm right with you there. Um, I don't like it either. I find when it comes to interfacing, especially with making bags, is a lot of the cost involved in making a bag is with the interfacing. And so when you tell people how much this bag costs to make, some people are like, whoa, blown away at the cost. And... 50% of that cost is interfacing and I just want to get sewing. I want to cut the pattern out, cut the fabric out, and I just want to sew. And so attaching interfacing, yeah, I'm with you 100%. I dislike it. I'm hoping with my cover stitch I enjoy hemming more. And yeah, I think interfacing is number one. And I think maybe neck bands not so much I think it's the cuffs that are I dislike more than neck bands because this area is just so small compared to neck band at least a neck band I could fit it around my sewing machine like fit it around but I can't fit the cuff around so Brenda I hope that answers your question I dislike attaching the interfacing as well but thanks for your question I hope that this has given you insight into my sewing journey and where I have come and how far I've come and how much I have learned over the years. I've collected a lot of books. I could go through my machines in another video. I could go through all my books and resources in another video. But I really hope that this gives you insight of as to why I sew, where I, where I, where I started and how far I've come. And I really hope that my sewing journey and my silly mistakes inspires you to either start sewing or continue sewing or continue making mistakes and learning from them. Uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the mistakes I've made and learning from them because I've grown. Like who would have thought back in 2017 when I'm using corsage pins and using a straight stitch on knits that I would come to buy an industrial sewing machine. 
I'm just I'm proud of my journey and I and I thank you so much for being a part of this journey and supporting me along the way. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time.